Hello YouTube and welcome to another route learning video. On today's video we're going to be travelling along the western lines of Scotland route from Dumfries to Kirkudbright in a BR Green Class 111 DMU. Our stops will be Dalbeatty, Castle Douglas, Tarf and Kirkudbright. The total distance for the journey is just over 30 miles. I have started here from Dumfries rather than Carlisle where the route actually starts as we've already covered the Carlisle to Dumfries section which is duplicated on the west coast main line over Shap add-on so I've already made a video on that in the class 156 in this direction I will ultimately cover that journey in the opposite direction on this route from Dumfries to Carlisle but for today's journey we're going to be taking the Kirkabright branch from Dumfries the Class 111 was in service between 1957 and 1989. It was built by Metro Camel and constructed between 1957 and 1960 with a total of 23 of these trains built with either two or three coaches per train. The coach lengths are 57 feet and the maximum speed of this train is 70 miles per hour though the maximum speed we'll be able to get up to on the journey today is 60 miles per hour due to the speed limits. The train has two Rolls-Royce engines rated at 180 horsepower per coach or should I say per power car. In this case we have two power cars on the train giving us a total of 360 horsepower. Also the train has a mechanical 4 speed gearbox and we do need to operate the gears manually. Once in the train there's not a lot that we need to do to set up. So just to have a quick look around the cab, the first thing you see here is the wheel which is the handbrake. It's not a steering wheel as I've heard some people say before, although I'm sure most of you or I hope all of you know that trains don't have steering wheels. And now over the driver's side of the cab, just to go through the controls quickly. On the left hand side here we have the throttle control which is a four position throttle. And then we have a gauge there which is the uh, revometer or should I say tachometer. And that will help us when changing gear to know when to do it. Now in front of us we have the horn lever. As I have the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed, the horn is two-tone. Just to also say that the driving techniques used in this video are for the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack, uh, which makes massive improvements to the Class 101, 111, 117 and 121 DMUs. In front of us there we have the AWS reset button, which I've just pressed. Now over here we have the gear lever, so what I need to do um, before we start is I need to press shift and D to move that all of the way to the top and that puts us straight into gear one. I am going to move that down for a moment while I put the train into forward which I've just done now and now I'm going to move the gears back up to gear one there. Over here we have the brake lever which is a vacuum brake. It works very much the same way as the brakes on a steam train where you move the handle and that controls how quickly the brakes apply rather than how hard they will ultimately be applied. So to apply the brakes we will move the handle. Just to show you I'll release them now and you can see the brake gauge at the top left there climbing so that shows us that the brakes are released. To then apply the brakes I'll move the handle and you can see the pressure now falling it will keep falling to zero if I leave it like that but if I want to hold a certain brake pressure I just move the handle back a bit to the hold position and that will ensure that the brakes hold at that position or at that brake force. Now release again and just to show you now if I move the handle much further to the left you can see that the brakes apply much much quicker so the handle is controlling the speed at which the brakes actually apply. Now that we've gone through all that we're pretty much ready to start. Starting from Dumfries, the starting speed limit is 30 miles per hour, and we've got around 14 and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Dalbeatty. 
As we approach 15 miles per hour, I'm now going to idle the power, and as you can see, the tachometer needle is falling. Once it's at the bottom, which it is now, just wait a second or two, change the gear, and then reapply power once again. The speed limit has quickly gone up to 60 miles per hour here, but as you can see, it is dropping to 30 again as we cross these points. As we've reached around 25 miles per hour, I've now shut off the power once again, and now I've gone into gear three. I'm just going to increase the power slightly here. The speed limit is shortly going up to 40 miles per hour at this next speed wall just here. And I'm applying a bit more power now to bring us up towards 30 miles per hour. Just to say, if you need to coast in this train at any point, then you must go into gear four to do so. As you can see, we are, we are now speeding up and as I mentioned, the speed limit is now 40 miles per hour. As we reach 40 miles per hour, I'm then going to idle the power, which I am doing now. Now the tachometer has fallen, I'm going into gear 4 and I'm just going to leave the power in idle and allow the train to coast until we can accelerate in a moment up towards 60 miles per hour. We're now passing Carnation Works on the right and we're now passing the 60 mile per hour speed board so I can go straight into full power as this train does take a few moments uh, to respond to any control input from the throttle. So as you can see we're now starting to accelerate. So in this train it's usually pretty much as soon as you pass a speed board you can immediately go into full power because you can be sure the rear of the train will have passed the board before you reach the uh, uh, before you go above that speed. As we get towards 60 miles per hour, I'm just going to reduce the power by one to step three power, and that should hold us at just below 60 miles per hour. So we are now in step three of power, and it's going to hold us around 58 to 59 miles per hour. Just to say that the HUD actually reads a different speed on this train slightly to the speedometer. So the speedometer is actually slightly under reading our speed. We're now passing Maxwell Town Station. And here the gradient is going to start going up as steep as 1 in 90. However, step 3 power should enable us just to continue at this speed without losing too much speed. So the western lines of Scotland route travels through southwest Scotland. The line from Carlisle to Dumfries on this route still exists in real life. However, from Dumfries onwards, pretty much all of the way to Stranra, including the journey we're on, this line is now closed in real life. As we approach the next signal, we've then got half a mile to go to a speed change, which is a reduction down to 50 miles per hour. I'm going to idle at the crossover point just coming up. And then I'm going to brake lightly on the next left-hand curve just coming up here. So I've now idled the power. I'm just going to apply the brakes lightly just to drop to 15 on the brake gauge, which you can see there. I'm now going to hold that brake pressure just to ensure that we've slowed down to 50 in time. I've now released the brakes. 50 miles per hour is a very hard speed to maintain in this train. As you'll see in a moment, just to point out the speed limit has now actually dropped to 50. So to try and maintain 50 miles per hour, we need to go between steps two and three power. Step three will cause us to accelerate and step two will cause us to slow down. Uh, step two power will maintain us around 44 to 45 miles per hour. However, I'm aiming to try and travel at 50. So as we get up towards 50 in a moment, I will then pull the power back to step two and you'll see our speed start to fall off again. And I'll just keep going between step two and three to try and maintain this speed.
as you can see I pulled back the power, we're slowing down again so I'm now bringing the power back up and we should start speeding up again in a moment. The gradient along here does in fact steepen to as steep as 1 in 73, which is the gradient that we are now on. Just to say that I do still have all of the videos planned which I've mentioned before, which is the Deltic from Peterborough to York, and also the Scottish East Coast Main Line in a Voyager going southbound. In addition to that, I am also still planning to make another American video soon, which should be on the Pacific Surf Liner route. I also recently bought the U-Bahn uh, Frankfurt uh, route, which comes from Just Trains and that's actually a pretty good route so I'm considering making a video on that one soon as well. Also still to come is the question and answer freight video. I do have a number of questions now which are to answer so thank you for all of them so far. If, you, if there are any more questions please don't hesitate to ask as it's still going to be a week or two before I can get round to that video. I would just like to point out that the speed limit here has just gone up to 60 miles per hour so I've just applied full power to bring us back up towards 60. And as we approach 60, I'll once again go down to step 3 of power to maintain us around that speed. I have now gone down to step 3 of power, and as you can see, we are roughly maintaining this speed here, which is around 59 miles per hour. We're now approaching Lockenhead Station, which we're just passing through here. We've now got eight and a half miles to go to Dalbiti, and here the gradient is levelling out. One thing that you may notice with the Class 111 is that there is an increased appearance of speed compared to other trains due to the very large window view and the fact that it seems quite low down which allows you to see more of the track. What I find is in, in other trains such as the Pendolino where you can see much less of the track you don't feel like you're going quite as fast as you actually are but in trains such as this I really do think you get a great uh, sensation of speed especially with the uh, zoomed back FOV, which I also use in this game. Another great sight on this route is the many semaphore signals, which has passed a semaphore distance signal, although you will have noticed there are also colour light signals on this route. So a distance signal can only display a yellow or a green aspect, it purely serves as a warning signal for those who aren't so familiar with British signalling. And also with the semaphore signals, if the arm is pointing at a horizontal position, that would be warning me that the next signal is a red or one of the signals in the next section is a red and if the home signal, which is the other type of signal we're about to pass is in the horizontal position, that would mean stop. We've just passed through Kiliwan Station. As you can see though, these signals are at a diagonal angle, a 45 degree angle so this indicates that they are clear and we are okay to proceed.
once we reach the next distance signal. That indicates that we're then three quarters of a mile from the next speed limit, which is a reduction back down to 50 miles per hour. As you can see, we're just approaching the distance signal here now, which we've just passed. So we've got three quarters of a mile to go to the 50 mile per hour speed limit. I'm going to idle the power in a moment and then I'm just going to brake lightly on the left hand curve coming up and that should bring us down to 50 miles per hour at about the right time. You can see the left, the left curve is approaching now so I'm just going to idle the power. I'm now just going to brake lightly down to 15 on the brake gauge once again and that, as I said that should bring our speed off about right. Now we're at 50 miles per hour, I've once again got to do the balancing act with the throttle between steps 2 and 3 power to try and maintain this speed. As you can see we're now entering the 50 mile per hour speed zone, so I did brake just slightly too early. We're now passing through Kirk Gunzian station and we've got around four and a quarter miles to go to Dalbiti. speed limit is now about to go back up to 60 miles per hour so as we pass the board I'm now going into full power to accelerate at this point we've got around one and three quarter miles to go to the next speed change which is another reduction back down to 50 miles per hour once again as we approach 60 miles per hour I'm then going to move the power back one step to step three and this should now maintain us at around this speed Now looking out for the next distance signal. Once we've reached that distance signal we've then once again got three quarters of a mile to go to the next speed limit which is the reduction back down to 50 miles per hour. So I'm just going to idle the power at this point and allow the train to coast down towards 50. As you can see our speed is very slowly falling off. I am going to apply some light braking once we're on the next left hand curve here. So I'm now going to apply the brakes to 15 on the brake gauge again. As you can see we're now at 15 and our speed is coming off quite nicely. I'm not sure of the exact position of the 50 mile per hour speed ball, but I know it's coming up very shortly. Now that we're at 50 miles per hour, I've released the brakes and I'm just going to allow the train to coast momentarily. As you can see, we are now entering the 50 mile per hour speed zone. We're now passing through Southwick station. The speed limit will shortly be going up to 60 miles per hour. However, that is just three quarters of a mile from a reduction back down to 50 once again. As you can see, we have now passed the 60 mile per hour speed board. However, I see very little point in accelerating due to the uh, proximity to the next speed change back down to 50 miles per hour. As you can see, just allowing the train to coast along here in idle power, we're actually pretty much maintaining 50 without too much difficulty due to the current gradient. The speed limit has now dropped to 50 miles per hour and we've got around three quarters of a mile to go to the next speed change which is a reduction down to 40 miles per hour. 
we are about to start going downhill here so I am just going to apply some light braking now to ensure that we don't gain any speed and break the speed limit. The 40 mile per hour speed restriction comes into force shortly after we've left this left hand curve here. So I'm just going to allow the brakes to continue to slow us down gently towards 40 miles per hour. And the gradient does level after this curve which means that we should then brake slightly quicker. See our speed has now fallen to 30 miles per hour and we are approaching Dalbiti station now. So on this left hand curve here I'm now going to apply more braking to bring our speed off as we slow down for the stop. So as you can see I've gone between 10 and 15 on the brake gauge which is bringing our speed off quite nicely. I will release the brakes in a moment. Now you can see the platform just coming up so I'm going to reapply them now. I try not to go below 10 on the brake gauge when slowing down. I'm also trying not to enter any platform at faster than about 20 miles per hour to ensure that we don't overshoot. So here at Dalbiti we do need to stop next to the station building just coming up. Once again gone back to 10 on the brake gauge and now I'm going to release and hold it. Try and hold it at 15. Now reapply. I've gone slightly below 10 now which is slightly harder than I planned. Now release the brakes a bit more as we come to a stop to make the stop more gentle. And once we've stopped I'll apply the brakes harder, open the doors and I'm going to put the gear back into the neutral position. Now that it's time to depart Dalbiti, I'm moving the gear to gear 1, releasing the brakes and then applying power. The starting speed limit at Dalbiti is 40 miles per hour and we've got around 5 and a quarter miles to go to the next stop which is Castle Douglas where we'll actually divide this train with the front half that we're in going to Kirkudbright and the rear half going to Stranra Harbour. So now we've reached around 15 miles per hour, I've just shut off the power and now I've changed the gear and we can accelerate a bit more to change again in gear up to gear 3 once we reach around 25 miles per hour. So I'm not sure if I mentioned it already but the scenario for this journey is called Time Trader. It's actually a three part scenario available on Steam Workshop. And so we're actually playing part 2 which is the Dumfries to Kirkabright section. Part 1 was Carlisle to Dumfries. Just to point out the speed limit has now gone up to 60 miles per hour. So yes, part 1 was Carlisle to Dumfries, and as I said part 2 is Dumfries to Kirkabright. There is a part 3 to this scenario as well, which is where you go from Castle Douglas where the train divides and you take the rear part of the train and you drive all of the way to Stranra Harbour. I do plan on covering part 3 of this scenario in a future video so that you get to see the whole of the western lines of Scotland route. The total distance for this route I believe is around 100 miles. Once again as we reach 60 miles per hour I'm just reducing the power to step 3. In fact it looks like we have gone slightly over 60 here, unfortunately though we will be slowing down a bit now as we go onto this uphill section, we're actually going up at 1 in 100. I am now idling the power and allowing the train to coast. Now I'm just braking lightly to help us bring our speed off in time for a speed reduction down to 50 miles per hour which is coming up very shortly. And now I'm just allowing the train to coast down for the rest of, to the rest of the speed limit. And as you can see we're now entering the 50 mile per hour speed zone. 
Once again I've got to do the balancing act between steps 2 and 3 power to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed. As you can see the speed limit is now going back up to 60 miles per hour and then we've got around two and three quarter miles to go now to Castle Douglas. So I've just gone into full power and once we've reached 60 I'll once again go down to step three of power to ensure that we don't lose, sorry, <laughs> to ensure that we don't gain too much speed. In fact I'm shutting off the power momentarily just to ensure we don't break the speed limit like I did a minute ago by a couple of miles an hour. So what we're looking for now is the next distance signal which indicates that we're then half a mile from the next speed change which is a reduction down to 40 miles per hour. Now see the distance signal coming up which is the marker that we're half a mile from the 40 mile per hour speed limit so at this point I'm now going to idle the power and allow the train to coast and I'm going to apply the brakes as we reach the end of this left hand curve going up to sorry going down to 10 on the brake gauge so the brakes are now on and now holding us at 10 on the brake gauge which should bring our speed off about Apologies for the uh, lag and stutter that I was getting just there, it seems to have cleared up now. As you can see, we're now doing 40 miles per hour and the speed limit has dropped to 40. And we're now at between 10 and 15 on the brake gauge, continuing to uh, bring the speed down. As you can see, Castle Douglas Station just coming up. Now release the brakes momentarily as we were slowing down just slightly too quick. And so we're entering the platform at around 25, well 20 to 25 miles per hour. And once again I'm using 10 on the brake gauge to bring our speed off. Here at Castle Douglas I'm going to aim to stop near the end of the platform which seems about the right place to me. I've just released the brakes once again as I felt we were slowing down again slightly too quick. Now I'm going to bring the brakes to 15 on the brake gauge and hold them there momentarily just to see what happens and if it brings our speed off quick enough. I'm going to apply slightly harder here and now release a bit as we come to a final stop. So now I'm going to put the brakes into full and put the gear into neutral and before we depart from here I am going to need to disconnect the rear unit from this front unit so from that point we'll then be a two coach train.
Now that it's time to depart Castle Douglas, I've come to the coupling between the two units. I'm just moving the mouse over it, and then I've double clicked on that to uncouple the rear unit from the front unit. Now that I've done that, we are cleared to depart, so I'm going to put the gear up to gear one and get us moving. The starting speed limit here at Castle Douglas is 40 miles per hour, though as you can see it's immediately going down to 30 as we depart the platform. And we've got around six and three quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Tarf. The speed limit will shortly be dropping to 25 miles per hour as we turn left just here onto the Kirkabright branch. So I've just gone into gear two now to bring us up towards 25 miles per hour. Once we reach 25, I will then idle the power and allow the train to coast. The line going to the right just here is the main line towards Stranra Harbour, and it's that route which I will be covering when I do part three of this scenario and record it. Now that we've reached 25 miles per hour, I've idled the power and gone to gear four, just while we coast momentarily. Once we pass the 40 mile per hour speed board just here, I'm then going to step down to gear three now, and then apply some power to bring our speed up a bit. We are now starting to go downhill on a gradient as steep as one in 85. So once we reach about 32 to 33 miles per hour, and then going to idle the power and allow the train to coast up towards the speed limit, until the speed limit goes up to 60 miles per hour in about half a mile. I have now gone into gear four as we are coasting on this downhill section. And the speed limit will be going up to 60 miles per hour just after the crossing that we're about to go over. You can see the gate for that coming up now. As you can see, the speed limit has now gone up to 60. I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast momentarily. While we're on this downhill section, the gradient will be levelling out in a moment, at which point I will then be going into full power to bring our speed limit up. And you can see that the gradient is levelling just here, so I'm now going up to full power. We're now getting close to 60 miles per hour. I'm now going to go down one in power settings to step three, as previously on this journey. In fact, uh, we nearly broke the speed limit again, so I just idled the power and now brought it back up to step three, which we previously used on this journey to ensure that we don't break the 60 mile per hour speed limit. now passing Bridge of D station. We've now got two thirds of a mile to go to the next speed change, which is a reduction to 50 miles per hour. So I've just idled the power at this point to allow the train to coast down towards 50 miles per hour. We are going to be going up at one in a hundred, which is going to help us lose speed as we head towards the 50 mile per hour speed limit.
now that we're at 50 miles per hour I'm once again going to have to go between steps 2 and 3 power to try and balance the speed and ensure that we don't go too fast or too slow. As you can see we have just entered the 50 mile per hour speed zone there. So the gradient's levelling out in a moment and then it will be going downhill. And so once we're on the downhill gradient I may well need to use the brakes to control the speed to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. see that the gradient has changed just here and it has leveled out and now we're going to start going downhill on this next right hand curve just here. So I am now going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. Once we passed under this overbridge just here we've now got half a mile to go to the next speed change which is a reduction down to 45 miles per hour. And so I'm just going to apply light braking now, so as you can see I've gone between 15 and 20 on the brake gauge. We'll try and control our speed to ensure that we don't accelerate. And just bring it down in time for the 45 mile per hour speed board. Once we pass the 45 mile per hour speed board, which you can see just coming up now, we've got one and three quarter miles to go to our stop at Tarth. We are going downhill here as steep as 1 in 74, so I am needing to continue using the brakes to try and control our speed. If our speed drops below 40 at any point, or drops to 40, I'll then release the brakes just to allow us to gain a little bit of speed once again. The speed limit will be dropping to 30 miles per hour just before our stop at Tough. Just to say that as you can see our speed has now fallen to 40 so I have just released the brakes momentarily. As you can see we are gaining speed again already. So I will apply the brakes again in a moment. The brakes are now on once again and controlling our speed. As you can see we are now passing the distance signal which is down which indicates that the signal at the end of the section ahead is not clear. The distance signal is three quarters of a mile from the 30 limit and the end of the platform at Turf. The gradient around this curve will be shallowing to 1 in 127. I'm just allowing us to lose a little bit more speed here. And now releasing the brakes momentarily, just to ensure that we're not going too fast as we head towards the stop at Turf, which will be coming up just around this next left-hand curve. So the moment that we see the distance signal coming up, we do then need to brake for the station. And also the 30 mile per hour speed limit just before the station. I've once again got the brakes on between 15 and 20, as you can see it is bringing our speed off slowly. It's also controlling our speed as we are still on the downhill gradient, just not as steep as what we were before. You can now see the distance signal coming up, so I'm now applying the brakes to 15 on the brake gauge and holding there. You can now see the platform coming up, and I did enter the 30 zone there at about 32 unfortunately, and I have also applied the brakes a bit too hard, so I've just brought them back towards 10 on the brake gauge. So I messed up just slightly there, but we're still in control, and obviously we're still going to stop here at the station in about the right place. So we need to stop just past this station building here, remembering now that we are a two coach and not a four coach train. We've had to apply the brakes slightly harder once again and now reduce back to 10.
Departing from Tuff, the starting speed limit is 30 miles per hour, and we've got around three and a half miles to go to the next and final stop, which is Kirkwood Bright. As you can see the speed limit is now going up to 45 miles per hour so once I'm in gear 3 we're able to accelerate up towards that. We are going to be going downhill here on a gradient of 1 in 100 so we will need to use light braking to control our speed. have now gone into gear 4 and so I'm just going to see what happens to our speed here. Uh, step 2 power will hold us at 45 miles per hour depending on whether we're on a level or downhill gradient. If we're going downhill it generally won't as the train will continue to accelerate but if we're going uphill then it's the perfect throttle position to maintain 45 miles per hour. I am now idling the power as we are going downhill slightly and I don't want to gain too much speed so I'm just making a very minimalistic brake application we've gone to literally 19, 19 and a half, something like that on the brake gauge just to control our speed the gradient will be levelling out in a little while and you'll notice that if, when we start to lose speed and then at that point I will use step 2 power to maintain the speed limit. It looks like our speed is starting to go down now and the gradient has just leveled off a bit here. So I'm now going to go into step 2 power and that should maintain us at around 45 miles, out, miles per hour. the hut that we just passed there we're now half a mile from the next speed limit which is a reduction to 35 miles per hour so I'm now idling the power just here and I'm allowing the train to coast and I'm going to brake down to 15 on the brake gauge at the end of this left hand curve just here so I'm now brake down to 15 and I'm holding that and that should bring our speed off about right for the 35 mile per hour speed limit just coming up now see the 35 mile per hour speed board just ahead and we are now doing 35 I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast at this point the speed limit will shortly be going back up to 50 miles per hour however that's only two-thirds of a mile from a reduction back down to 40 miles per hour so there's not much point in going much above 40 at this stage now we're passing the 50 speed board I'm just going to go into step 2 power to bring our speed up a little It will take us slightly longer to accelerate because I'm, I am accelerating in gear 4 rather than in gear 3 which you would normally use at this speed. I'm not going to go above 40 miles per hour as I see little point. Due to the proximity of the 40 mile per hour speed limit now coming up need to slow down for in a moment otherwise. As you can see I am just allowing the train to coast at 40 miles per hour. Once we pass the 40 mile per hour speed board we've then got just three quarters of a mile to go to Kirkup Bright Station. And we are going to start going downhill on the gradient of 1 in 102 so I, I may need to use light braking here now for speed control so I've just once again dropped to around 19 on the brake gauge which should hopefully hold us at this speed so as you see we have now entered the 40 mile per hour speed zone 
as we reach this distance signal here I am now going to brake to, uh, for the 20 mile per hour speed limit just coming up and so I'm going to go down to 10 on the brake gauge and hold us at this position and this should bring our speed off about right for the 20 limit. The speed limit is 20 miles per hour as we enter the station area here at Kirkwood Bright, which we are approaching now. I've now released the brakes and I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast. And as you can see, we're now entering the 20 mile per hour speed zone with the platform coming up just ahead. I'm going to aim to enter the platform no faster than 15 miles per hour. And now going to gently and gradually bring our speed off as we head towards the end of the platform to stop just in front of the buffers here. So here we are, arrival at Kirkwood Bright. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like if you've liked it and also subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Also, please don't forget to visit my Facebook page, the link of which is in the description of this video. And also, if you'd like to support me more, then please don't forget to check out my Patreon page. The link of that is also in the description of this video. So once again, thank you very, very much for watching.